Wow. I think uh, this is more like one of the first times we come back from the second half, and I'm like, I feel like I went to a buffet. I'm stuffed. Yeah, yeah that was quite the was, spread down there. There was a lot going on. God. I haven't had uh, salami or the kind so, of capicola. So dudes Soft like us, we, we show up for the podcast wow. and for those v- viewers out there. First of all, this dude's like us. I'm Sean. I am Paul. And I am Jeff. And we have a show once a week. At least we try to do it once a week. And uh, t- we have a show. And it's basically one night we do two shows. Uh, first, uh, well, they're about an hour and a half-ish uh, each show. Each show, ish, somewhere yeah, around there. ish. And um, halftime, we go downstairs, we have a snack, we talk about things and how they went, and usually we're, we're scolding me on, on some stupid thing I said, which is... We just think you talk too much, that's all. Yeah. Oh. Uh, you, you raise your mic up just a little bit. You know, or you're not and then we have snacks. It. Usually yes. it's uh, popcorns. Yeah, because we're all fat and we're trying to lose weight, so we and try and to eat And then Jeff, will, Jeff has like uh, all these seasonings he, he throws on there that are extra slap oh, yeah. your mama. I don't oh, think yeah. that's healthy. That well, skinny pop is not healthy. Yeah, it is. It's like three cups is like 90 calories. Really? Yes. Oh, well, I'm glad I ate a lot of that then and not yeah, the well, other And one. three cups is basically that entire bowl that yeah, we use. Yeah, but, when you, when you, <laughs> but when you eat like a, a bag oh, we don't you're eat a double bag. fisting the yeah. f- <laughs> well, today we had a lot of food. Yeah, well, that's my Sean, point. Sean brought over buffalo chicken dip. Yeah, I had yeah. some of that too. Yeah, that was good. And then on top cr- of that, your wife and uh, Miss Andrea. Yeah, leftover. Uh, had a nice charcuterie. Our, our local uh, neighborhood uh, d- dog. What do they call it? Blue, dog blue, do- dog blue, blue dog Democrat, Mister oh, yeah. Andrew. Blue dog Democrat. There you go. Yeah, she had. Uh, She's one of our favorites. She she catered some uh, uh, an event the other night. Had a. Huge charcuterie and uh, had some leftovers. Oh, and, and there's lots of salamis and uh, lots of fruits yeah. and cheeses. <sighs> I'm not yeah, sure it was nice. It was nice. Yeah, I'm full. I'm not going to be able to eat till too. tomorrow evening. I am too. It's normal anyways. I started a diet. Uh, I don't call it Is a diet. Is it a diet or fasting? It's, it's intermittent fasting. So uh, essentially, um, like I won't eat until tomorrow uh, between 5 and 6. And, See, that's um, conditional starvation. Uh, that's can, all that is. It's another word for it. Yeah. Being but Joe Biden. Here's the thing. Redefining it, words. It's, yeah. yeah. It's working, though. Me. So Yeah, but is it working in the correct way? I, I don't know, but the result You've lost weight? is I want to lose weight. What do you so, mean? So you said it's working, so are you yeah. losing weight? I'm losing weight. So, so are you losing fat or are you losing muscle? Uh, well, I'm losing weight. So that's where it's at right now. I think as long as we continue to do our workout, even though it's kind of intermittent, you know, I, I think that, that that's fine. Uh, well, which do you lose first? Do you lose fat or muscle first? Well, you start with fat, and if you, eat, if you don't eat enough, then you start getting into your muscles. Well, well that's after you burn all your fat? No. No. Look, no. look, here's the thing. I don't eat. <clears throat> I have coffee in the morning. I drink a lot of water during the day. That's good. And, uh, and you know, and, and I'm, it's not even painful. I, it's, not, it's not hard at all. You know, I just, I assume whenever I'm hungry, I stand up, I, I walk around the house a few laps, and uh, grab a bottle of water, suck it down, and I sit back on my desk, and I start pounding out my work again. See, I, it's amazing how many different diets and different variations of advice you can get mm. about how to I, I lose weight. I don't because suggest what it. Because what I have been told is that you need to eat a lot, very small portions, very frequently. We're supposed to nosh all throughout the Man, day. Man, look, I've, I've tried. And that is the exact all opposite. Kinds of things. What you're doing is the Dude, exact opposite. I get of it. That. I get it. I get it. But, you know, there. But isn't it frustrating? There are some people that believe on the opposite of that. They're, they believe exactly what I'm doing. And it's just like they give themselves a portal in which they're allowed to eat. And they give themselves a four to five hour window right. of the day. Yeah. And that's the time you eat. So my portal started uh, when I got over here, basically. So I didn't eat anything. So yours is from midnight to 10 p.m. <laughs> no, you jackass. Right. That's your portal? <laughs> no. Like, uh, I got here, what? So six, you're allowed to eat 30? for 10 hours, no, for 22 hours a day. Like, when I get home nice. tonight, I'll probably have an apple. And then right. I'll go to bed. And that's it. You're not supposed to eat right before your bed. Go to bed, though. No. That, see, that's not true either. You know, all these things are are rules that 
people say that they're rules, and then some people say there aren't rules, and it's That's just what like I'm saying. it's you why know, it's frustrating. Who's There's so right? Many. Who's wrong? But here's the thing: at this point in my life, mm-hmm. I have tried numerous, uh, numerous diets, and they, none of them work. Yeah, but for how long? It, it doesn't matter. And were you hundred percent uns- uh, true to it? I've been unsuccessful, regardless of the reasons. So this one, I feel like I have more control because all I have to do is not eat. Is not eat, and if that's it, then I'm good because I can eat whatever the fuck I want during that little window of opportunity. As long as, long as it's reasonable, because really, like an entire pizza. Uh, well, that's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, that's that, not going to happen. Yeah, see, that doesn't work. You no, but you see, here's that. the thing: my stomach has shrunk. So at so this get, point, you get sick if you don't. No, eat but he, here's I have a technique. Uh-huh. So what I do is I eat uh, a small protein. A protein? Uh, a protein. Like, like, uh, like is a, that a, uh, a is professional of, teenager? Is that a cup French? of uh, pistachios and uh, some nuts. I'm going to eat the protein. <laughs> or, um, or, you know what? I'll have a little bit of that pulled pork. You know, I've got a bunch prepackaged. And I'll do, I think I measured them out to 125 grams. And I'll have a little bag of that. And then I'll just kind of sit bitch for about an hour. And my stomach takes it, eats it. It's having fun. It's having a good old time. And by the time when I, it's come to eat like something else, I'll have a little salad and I'll throw a little extra meat on top, and I'm done. I'm good so far. During I'm, your portal, I'm only yeah during the portal time. So I've I've only been doing this what since six, Thursday six weeks Thursday of last week. Yeah. So it's, it hasn't even been a full week. <laughs> but look, here's the deal, guys. I weighed a hundred and fifty five point eight. That's a really good weight for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I weighed 255.8. Yeah, that <laughs> Wait a second. I was like, wow, you wow, you, you must be like three feet tall. Yeah, yeah. I, my, my dick fell off. You know? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So I weighed 255.8. Now I'm not saying this is working. I'm not I'm not all I'm saying is I weighed 255.8. All right. Uh before I got in the shower, before I headed over here. You have a good deuce. It was one. It was two fifty five of two fifty one point zero. All right. Okay. So you guys it's seven pounds. No, no, no it's it's four. Oh, oh, it's, I thought you said two fifty three. No, uh, it's two uh five zero. Uh, you said two fifty one. A two fifty one period that's, zero. That's all water weight. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. Right? That's you what know everybody what? says. Oh, it's water. Yeah, but weight. I drink lots of water. So so just like when I had the stomach flu, I lost ten pounds. It's well, all water weight. Yeah. But here's the thing, guys. It's going down. Because I've, I've, I've measured myself. I, I, uh, I weighed myself, uh, you know, every other day. It, it's going down. It's going down. It's going down. So I don't care. Good. I mean, it, it's yeah, frankly, it's, it's, keep all doing it. It. It's, 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 it's only. We've all struggled except for Paul, right? He's just like, oh, I lost five pounds. Last oh, week. yeah. So I, I quit drinking oh, and I lost yeah. five pounds. Well, oh, it's because I'm me. eating lots of protein. <laughs> <laughs> Sperm. Uh, That's what it is. What? Is what you said? <laughs> no. No, I did not say that. Interesting. You know, this, this I think we're going to we're gonna have to omit a few words from our vocabulary. Yeah. I wouldn't mind sperm being one of them. Whale. Is it a sperm whale? That's what I was <laughs> Yeah, we were talking about whales. Well, if it's a compound word, that'd be different. Yeah. <laughs> Can't be a pause in between sperm and whale. Yeah, I was... Uh, I well, I mean, let's just say sperm... <coughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you guys, uh, have you seen Terminal List? Yes. Uh, what is that? With that's Chris, an Amazon. That's, that's the Chris, Chris Pratt. Pratt. Chris Pratt. Oh, my God. I would just watched Passengers again with uh, Chris Pratt. Oh, I, I want to watch that again. That was such a good movie. Yeah. I love that movie, man. Me too. Me too. All right. So what I heard about the it. Terminal List. What I heard about huh. Terminal List is that it was getting torn up by the critics. Well, the critics are a bunch of bo- I don't want. I don't listen to any critic. I, I know because zero. Because here's what they were saying: Oh, it's full of you know masculinity, uh, wanting uh, wannabe military, pro-American. Yeah, it, 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 yeah uh, was it pro-American, say? glorifying white, glorifying the military, and you know all this kind of crazy stuff. And uh, for those that don't know, the terminal list is is, a, is an American action is. It, is I, it? A, it, it <laughs> it's I, an American action thriller television series based on a Jack Carr's 2018 novel uh, of the same name. The series tells the story of a Navy SEAL who seeks to avenge the murder of his family. It stars Chris Pratt. It's quite violent. 
Oh, it it's is. very violent. There are some dark parts to it I yeah. was not ready for. I mean, when, you, when, when he killed the Sicario, I kind of warned you about that. You, right? you did. You, you <laughs> shared something about an yeah, intestine, he, and he I was, was thinking, he was wow. Angry. He's, yeah, he was. But they didn't yeah. really show anything. Well, they showed him handling a very long sausage. Yeah, that's true. They did. You know, and I then said, hey, you're free to go. All right, you can go walk now, as his intestines were nailed to the wall. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's right. The guy passed out and died before he could move, but, you know. Uh, but, well, yeah, it's, a, it's very good. I'm actually going to read the book. I'm going to read this whole series because this guy, uh, Jack Carr, he's an ex-SEAL himself. You know, but what's interesting is that, that so Chris Pratt is the producer. He's the everything of this thing, right? He's the producer, the obviously the main actor, and he said what it was. It, along with the director, they were both saying, the, a big reason why they wanted to make this is because they wanted to uh, honor. It's a it's a shout out to to military personnel and Correct. Navy SEAL. And there's a lot of stuff yet, going on behind him. But he's that. doing shady stuff. So how is that really? Uh, but are they, honoring are Navy they? SEALs? Are they? Oh, doing, he's, oh, he's clearly doing shady stuff. He's no, going around. No, they're doing their job. Well, but he's well. He was wronged. He, he was, was. He was given the this compound is no different G. Than, this is no different than uh, what's the Keanu Reeves, John, John Wick. Yeah, John Wick going around just vengeful. Right. Like so, him so killing this guy everybody. was given the compound G or whatever it was called. Right. Right. And it gave him brain tumors. Are we spoiling it for any of so, us? No. Yeah. Spoiler alert. So as I post well, this, well, six on. months so, later. So back up. But I mean, the point is, is, is that. But what are the? What is that compound stuff they're giving? Well, them? it's supposed to enhance them, right? So that's what it was. It was an experimental uh, yes. thing that uh, they wanted to give because you know when you sign your life over to the military, you're like you're their property, right? You know, well, so, and they were trying to make them more elite. Yeah, warriors. And, and this now, stuff keep was in suppo- mind, I haven't watched the whole thing, so this stuff was supposed yeah. to oh, uh, make them. We're in the midst uh, of watching it, so you haven't seen the intestines. I, I, I okay. did see that one. Responsive. It was. It was supposed to enhance them all around, right. and it, it perhaps gave, did, but gave them tumors. It gave them brain tumors, yeah, and then they, they tried tumors. to kill them all. Yeah, they wanted in the to very opening suppress scene, right. So they tried to kill them all, they, they, and that because if it got out. That this was causing tumors, it was going to torpedo the the, the company sale. The company sale, correct? Yeah. Right. Oh uh, yeah. So right. anyway, it, but what what led me to uh, to talk about terminal list going kind of going back to critics is that this is joke. It's one of these uh, examples. Like click on Rotten Tomatoes terminal list right there, Mister Producer, and, and and this is what the problem with critics are: average, average. Uh, thermo- thermo- thermometer. Tomato meter. Tomato meter. You're close. Uh, I would, uh, <laughs> so that is uh, that's the critics, right? That's the critics. Yes. That's thirty nine percent. Stop making fun of me. Thirty nine percent of blind. the thermometers <laughs> is twenty. Oh, what? Oh, all critics. Uh, all critics. Twenty six percent liked it, and then the average audience score was ninety four percent liked it. Well, you know what? It's so, the average, like, so the average person, us, us, you know, a like dude the, like us, liked it. It's kind of like the People's Everybody. Choice Awards. You but know, the snobs didn't. Yeah, you, know, you got the people that say, "All right, look, if you're gonna if you're gonna have a movie and the movie has to hit a criteria, and they're like, all right, well, the, you know, the criteria is A, B, C, and D, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Uh, the People's Choice don't give a shit. They're kind of like, I like the movie. I think it hit all marks. Whatever, I don't care. The critics are looking at those. Tears. They're looking at. All right. Well, did it fulfill tier one? I don't one? think so. Did it fulfill tier tier no. tier two? Uh, three I and four? disagree. I disagree. They're, well, that's what the critics are kind of looking at. like. Like where they're they're grading. I made an analogy that they're grading the the chilies. You know, like you know, the people's choice can love the chili and they could rate it fantastic. But the critics are going to be like, well, it didn't hit the mark because the tomatoes were too large and the the beans weren't right. I don't and think, it had meat. I don't think that's all of it though. I think they. They look at these these days, and just like Paul said, there's too much masculinity. There's too much pro America, too much pro military. So, so you I think don't this like it. was yeah, they're woke. These they're, are kind they're, of uh, they're woke wokenisms uh, applied correct. sentiments. Yes. That's too 100%, 100%. bad. Totally 100%. personal sentiments going so, into this. So who correct. are these? So here's uh, the problem, though. Sorry to interrupt, Sean, but the, the, here's the problem with that. It completely makes their opinions irrelevant. It's void. That's why I don't look at any completely critic. Completely irrelevant. Yeah. Because we're supposed to be looking at that going, hey, should I go see that movie? Yeah. Right. Or should I go watch it? Or should I rent it? Right. Or should I buy it? Right? Is it a movie worth watching? Well, 94% of the thing. people that watched it said yes. The, the average uh, tomato meter, uh, 
Well, for this example, the critics, they, it really should be a little bit more broad. You know, they're, I, because even at the uh, Siskel and Ebert, uh, you know, they would give, you know, there's little two thumbs up, you know, but they would also explain the movie a little bit. Like, that it's a very fun then. movie to see. That was different know. back then. But it, but it they was. would still explain I used to watch, it. I, I used to watch that every Sunday or whenever it was. That'd be one of the shows we'd watch, the Siskel and Ebert show. And they'd have three movies, and we'd sit there and listen, and they'd break down the movie, and they'd say why they didn't like it. Or I, they I never said, what, well, what. it's too masculine or it's too um, pro-America. But, but well, even so let, after so the end of them criticizing it, they'll come back and say, even though I didn't like these parts, the movie was a lot of fun to watch. Because right. a lot of action, there was a lot of stuff going on, the storyline just sucked. So, Mr. Producer, click on see score details. Let's just pick one or two really crappy scores from the all critics, right? And let's see, let's see what what they say about it. What, what do you mean? I uh, because it because it says like go to the top critics. No, 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 any of them. I mean, just you're supposed to be able to click on it, and it tells you why they didn't like it. Well, uh, it's the actual reviews, right? Yeah, the actual review. Where oh, does it say that? You can't click it anywhere, huh? So where's the, where are the reviews? Uh, I've never. I don't go to the site. I have done that before. So do they hide it? I don't know why uh, it's not in there. All right, let's try it again. Let's try so, so, see. Uh, select top critics. Just can you're you supposed click to be on able the, to. Oh, okay. Can Just, you click on the to, the tomato? There, there they are. There we go. All right, here we go. Let's. Uh, okay, let's see. Let's just pick pick one of them for me, uh, Jeff, and read it. Let's let's see why they say it's horrible. All right. All right. Uh, you got Alex Mady, the Joe Blows Movie Network. The terminal was likely would have been uh, would have worked far better as a feature film or maybe a limited series of no more than four to six episodes. As it stands, the Whatever. story is overlong and plottingly told, and somehow makes revenge feel bland and boring. Okay, we give it a six out of ten. Scroll down to the, there's one below. The problem with trying to intellectualize a glorified one-man mission is that the writing paints itself into a corner in terms of real-world nuts and bolts. Oh, my God. It gave it a 1.5 out of 5. This is a dude from India. Rahul. Rahul Desai. <laughs> All right, but hold on. I'm kind of curious. Click to the left uh, left of the full review. I mean, 1.5. Guy's a moron. I don't know. I, I don't. You know what? When, when 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 I see these critics and they're like the Oscars, right? The movies that they nominate for the Oscars, I've never seen. Like the last couple of years, I've never seen them. So are the critics they're that obscure. decide who wins the Oscars the same folks that are making? I think the so. I think there's. A, I think there's a there's a panel who decide what movies are up for Best Picture, and they're all recently. For the most part, just obscure things. I've never seen. I have no desire to see them. See, so this is a. I mean, we could translate translate this directly to politics. I mean, this is currently how our politics are are picked. Is our the, politicians? You mean? What do you, what do you mean? <laughs> well, it's the same type of uh, of lottery. You know, you would think it's the people's choice, but it's not. You got just the the critics that are. are yeah, I couldn't tell you the last time I actually read a. A critic's review. That you a a that lukewarm you and about. dilated story, poorly sustained by a mediocre performances, in spite of the important names in the ensemble, and without much else to offer but the promised resolution of a predictable plot. Mr. Uh, Paula, or it's actually Paula Vasquez Paula. Prieto. That's Paula. Paula. That's Paula. Yeah. I mean, but again, I'm going to argue that they are completely irrelevant and invalidated. From Argentina. When ninety four percent of the people who watched this movie loved it, and Chris Vosser from the Irish Independent. And so, how how would a critic? How how does any critic go? Uh, how do we yeah, get it so wrong? Hey, I, I, yeah, I, they should say they should see that and go, man, I must have missed something. Well, look, here's but of the thing. course, you know, what do you think they they say? I watched. What the do you whole think thing. they say in there? Uh, well, those people are just plebs. I mean, what they do don't you know think, what Jeff? Doing. If right. you were to give it a scale from one to what they was it one to one hundred? They gave it a what? What did they say on there? Eighty nine. Ninety four percent. What what would you give it? I mean I'd give it an A. It was well done. Yeah. Now, there were I thought in the first one or two episodes that there were some really Hokey. slow spots. Oh, okay. And once you got past those first couple episodes, it it, it it really picked up. 
I thought there. I even told that to Julie. I may even said that to you, Sean. That there's a couple of spots in the first one or two episodes that it's just really slow. Right. Right. And uh, outside of that, though, I thought it was outstanding. Um, like I said, I'm going to read the book and uh, and read it. I give yeah. it. An, it's I a give series. it a, a There's like four or eight, five of them. Eight of a ten out of ten. Yeah, eight out of ten. Yeah, I give I it mean, an A. It was uh, maybe 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 a B plus. Yeah, I could do that because you know what it it's it was fun. Chris Pratt's fun to watch. You know uh, the the technology associated with you know everything that the Navy SEALs have. You know all the gadgets and gears. You know yeah. look people like to see uh, excellent teamwork. You know, and how they they go into places, they infiltrate, and they're 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 communicating, and they're you know. Well, these are the type of books that I read. I enjoy this it. exact right here. There's about th- three or four authors that I read that, uh, and I'm going to add this guy to a Jack Carr, or this exact same thing, where they're uh, black ops, elite. Uh, Delta Force. Yeah, well, they're even above that, right? They're the, the elite elite, and uh, those are the books I read on top of you know a couple other ones, right? But I read this all, all the time. Yeah, but those guys that are the elite of the elite, uh, unfortunately, they only they have a they have a shelf life. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean you can well, only deal with. with and what is interesting is these books that I've read that I have like ten or twelve in the series. All these guys they age through this series, and a couple of them where they're getting into their late forties and they're starting to deal with and they deal with the the age aspect and still trying to do what they do. So oh, they're dealing I thought you were going to say they're books. dealing with like the trauma, PTSD type well, of that, stuff. Maybe but just the, the physical, physical attributes. Well, the physical attributes. Oh, of course. It's beating the body down. It's keeping the mind sharp. Um, and uh, so they're de- what I find interesting is is the, the characters are aging through these series and they're dealing with it now. And they're struggling. And they're and yeah, they're they're having to work out harder. They're having to do this. It's not as easy as it used to be. Right. Well, that makes it realistic at least. And they're having to think, what's next? Right. right. So what's all right? I can't do this forever. What's next? Kind of right. thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what do what do they do? I mean, how do you go from a, a career like that back into like working at a manufacturing plant? Well, that's part of the challenge, right? Is adjusting back. You hear about the uh, the soldiers coming back and say, "Last week I was over there shooting people, and now I'm serving hot dogs at the ballpark." In in a completely n- what normal quiet yeah. yeah. Like and it's an adjustment, world. and and a lot of a lot of the guys and, and having, gals, having some little shithead disrespect you, yeah, and, and you kind of like, dude, I, I just, I just watched five of my buddies die, yeah, like yeah. for like, this country, like and, less and than a really, week ago, yeah, yeah and, last and week I was over there, and, and yeah. you're getting pissed at me because someone forgot to put a fucking mustard packet in your bag, right? You can fucking suck it. Yeah, I can, yeah. I can understand the frustration and the uh, the the adjustment back. It'd be it'd be it'd be difficult. Well, yeah. I mean, that's why PTSD is like a like very prevalent. Well, that's even no. diff- that's different than just the adjustment period, right? Yeah, you well, know, yeah, the, the post traumatic stress syndrome is, uh, you know, those are from experiences like hardcore, like you know, run, driving over an IED or something. I mean, the whole experience of going overseas itself and being exposed to it is one form of it. But you know, you got extreme cases where you got these guys that that can't sleep. You know, they, they're they're having just like these bad dreams, and you know they're needing this medication, and they're just going crazy to where they blow their head off. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. happens. You know, probably more and than I, it should. I, it, it was happening way back in the Vietnam way era, more and you know than what? And nobody gave a shit. You know, and, it, and it's fucking sad because nobody knew. Nobody knew. It, it's kind of like the 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 women in the past. You know, they're complaining. Eh, eh, I don't want to stay home and do dishes all this. Shut up again in the kitchen. Make me a pot pie. No one was listening to them back then. You know, it's the case saying, <laughs> I'm sorry. Wow. I couldn't keep a straight face with it. What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> okay. No, but the, I'm serious. The, the whole <laughs> Vietnam era thing, there was, I mean, really, uh, there wasn't a sensitivity towards those Vietnam right. veterans. There really wasn't. And there should have been. There should have been more attention to it put back then. And in fact, it should have been something public, not, not attention public wise. There should have been. Real hands-on exposure to these soldiers when they came back. They came back. They got them off the bus. Yeah. They put them into their hometown. And they said, they said good hey, luck. Good luck. Uh, yeah. By the way, here's your wheelchair. Did you get the impression, or have you ever had the impression, that the people coming back from World War II um, 
acclimated so much better than <clears throat> like well, Vietnam well, or, who knows? or who knows? Persian Gulf. Well, or, we won't know, but... I don't think so. You but, don't think so? You think it was pretty much I, the same? Because I, uh. I, I see, I watch the documentaries and I see they're very old guys now. Right, yeah. and they still break down. Right, and so, they still deal with that stuff. But you hear stories though, where they came home and they started a leather a, a leather I, business. I, well, that they, doesn't mean that they were in a good place. No, that's true. I, I think that a lot of the the mentality of some of these these guys that grew up is uh, back in that era is that they they had hard times, so yeah. it, it was hard no matter what. I so mean, they were a little more. Conditioned. They were conditioned. I think. I mean, there were well, still still hardships. Well, I, I, I Gotta think. Be. I think. I yeah. think. But, I think having a hardship on a farm is a little different than being in trench warfare. Oh, and having your absolutely right. So yeah. I think there's differences there, and and, and I can guarantee those guys well, in World War II, okay, the guys at Pearl Harbor. What, I, what I'm more saying that is that shit. these guys were yeah. m- they, these guys were more taught to keep it in Cor- and, and, and keep them their emotions in check. And, and I think that's a big part of it. I think that's a big part of it, you know, because they call it the greatest generation, right? They were thankless, and they just got it done. Yeah, they got it done. They just got it done, and they just kept it in. And that was what you were supposed to do. You know what I mean? You weren't supposed to complain. You weren't supposed to admit that you had PTSD. You weren't supposed to, you know, you had a family to take care of. You had a farm to run. You had You just came back. And you just did it. You just took care of yeah, it. Well, yeah. and, there and were a lot of problems right. back then that just weren't reported. Right. And I think I think you're right. I think I think they were dealing with all that same stuff. Because you know what? There's no way any human couldn't not Right. You know, you you have to you have to have you have to be affected. Yeah, they, they weren't different types of humans back then. They, exactly. They just dealt with it differently. They possibly. dealt with it differently. Right? I mean, we don't know. We weren't alive then. There wasn't coverage about it back then. No. So how do you know? But just seeing what yeah, the soldiers had, go we've, through we've now. We've got parents that have gone through it, you know. Well, I mean, well, yeah, but not World War II. I don't know if your dad ever went through a, a war. No, my grandfather did. Your 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 and father. My dad was did. in Vietnam. Yeah, he went through Vietnam. So I don't know how he deals with that, but. Um, oh, my dad! I'll tell you a story with my moments. dad. There have been moments. Uh, yeah. When we were yeah. living in Germany, my uh, my dad was came home from work. ate We ate dinner. We were eating. He we he served us ice cream. He sat on the chair, was watching TV, had uh, the bowl of ice cream. He had finished it and fell asleep in the chair. And um, my sister and I, I don't think my brother, I don't, I don't know if my brother was born or not. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're, we're laughing in, on the diner, in the dining room. And, well, the dining room was just like, you know, the whole fucking place is like a thousand square foot. So right. it's not very big at all. And something that happens where my sister makes an abrupt noise. And it was from laughter. It was from. It wasn't anything bad. It would, like no one should have gotten in trouble for it. Like ah, that's so funny. Well, my dad woke up, gets up out of the chair, and dives to the corner of the room. Oh damn! For safety. Damn. Mm. And then he was stood up and realized what the hell was going on, and then took his bowl and fucking threw it across the room. And then went to bed. Yeah, so that's... there are little things like that. I'm kind of like, wow, you know, that happened. And then yeah. you wake up. That's post traumatic stress syndrome. Oh yeah, you know, right. I think right. Well, yeah, because you I think you, you, there's in inbound mortars. Yeah, that's like, exactly what it is. Yeah, I mean that's that's what they dealt with. They were sleeping, and then mortars would hit the camp, and hey, they would God, all have to you know, something like that. Oh yeah, you stand they'd have up to scramble you... out of bed with you know you know adrenaline and fear and right. God. I mean, that yeah. was awful. Yeah, you know, I, I I felt bad when it happened, but even it, but it didn't really register back then. I just felt bad because it happened and I didn't understand. But right. now that I understand, I'm kind of like I feel even worse. Well, you know the why? Yeah, now it's just like shit. And there's that's nothing. There are yeah. guys like that 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 never got over it. My dad, I think, got over it. Obviously, yeah. Well, but and there my, are some and guys my father-in-law that didn't. did as well. But I tell you what, they tell you know he t- he held, told the story where he landed and was going through the airport and got spit on. Yeah, they did. They completely disrespected the Vietnam. He vet. he got spit on. It uh-huh. wasn't like yeah, some of the guys like got spit on. He got spit on. He got spit on. Uh, three purple hearts and yeah. a silver star. Yeah, that's insane. Despicable. Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, he goes from turning eighteen on the plane over there, eighteen years old, and goes through what he went through, and comes home and gets spit on. Ah, oh, but his story. He's got such a story, and someone needs to capture it. Yeah. I mean, because uh, he shared some—I'm not going to share it because it's his story. Right. But 
the story <coughs> they have is is it it's so Alan the things because the things that he did before he got in the military, you know, in high school, uh, yeah. you know, selling booze out of the trunk yes. and doing that. And then the job he got in the Marines, how he was kind of like moving ice around. Like ice was a commodity. And right. he was like, he figured out a network on how to get ice. Making from money. Point, and, and he was kind of making a little side gig. He's always been an entrepreneur oh my God. Of, some, of some way or but it's or, just, uh, it, it's just, and yeah, that was just a little slice. It's not like he could really get in trouble for it. I right. mean, it was like one of these things where, you know, you, you have a, a laundry list of uh, a schedule. Uh, all right, we're going to bring ice to this place uh, today. We're going to bring it to there tomorrow. And we're going to make the list of where it's going to go. Well, he had the choice to make that list. So right. he was able to, you know, whatever. I mean, there's a lot more to it, obviously, but I'm not going to get it's, into it. But it was, it was crazy. His story was absolutely funny. But when he turns a corner and he says that when he was out in the jungle and he's out there for 45 straight days because his platoon was blown up. Right. And he's out there alone. And he says he's got these people to the left and the right of me. And I never forget my dad saying this when I said, when you got these gooks, and my dad stopped me and says, hey, you don't have the right to call them gooks. Mm, I can call them gooks. Interesting. And so I don't, I don't call them gooks anymore. But anyways, when he when he was sitting out there and you know there's people walking you know feet away from him, right? That will totally kill him and the two other guys that are with him. Oh yeah, wow, crazy. You know, and nobody knows that story, right? We know it because he told it to us. Yeah, that story needs to be captured. I know. There was one time when my company we decided to uh, go uh, visit a nursing home for a day, and we set up all sorts of stuff. There were people. Uh, there was a musical show where people were playing instruments, you know, that, that for the company that did that. And then there were people that just, you know, whatever they needed, you know, whatever they needed. Well, one the thing I did was uh, just go talk to people. There are people that would not leave their rooms. Right. You know, they have like a community area yeah. and they don't want to leave their rooms. So you go in there and you say, you know, hey, do you mind if I sit and talk with you? And some would say, leave me alone. No, you know, and then but there was this one old guy that was uh, I sat down with him and he was a World War II vet. And did yeah. he give you a popsicle? Uh, n- no. Hey, boys. N- no, he he didn't. Oh. He didn't. But you know how you were talking about earlier? They still break down. Right. He was telling me stories. I mean, yeah. and I don't know if he's ever told anybody these stories. Maybe I, I don't know. And he just started. Yeah, he started uh, crying and yeah. And I was consoling him and telling him, and because he was like saying stuff that the, the things I've seen, the things I did. That was he had like major regrets about the things he had done. Right. And I was like, I was like, sir, you were doing your duty and you did it well. And you know, you know what I mean. I was kind of trying to make him feel well, that's better. The thing. That's the thing when you're in the in the middle of it, especially during like World War II with the Germans, right? Because you've got an 18 year old on this side, you got an 18 year old on that side. Yeah. They're not. Neither political. one of them had a choice to do what they're and doing. And they're just trying to kill each other. That's right. That's right. It's either and you, you or and me. You do things. And there's things that you do out there that are questionable. You know, it's kind of. But you're trying to stay alive. You you are you are trying to stay alive, and there's only and when you do them, it's just like, well, I just killed that guy a hundred yards away. I just killed that woman by accident a hundred yards away. So there's only things that you and God know that you did. Your 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 neighbor didn't see it. Your friend, your partner, your your soldier next to you didn't see it. You saw it. Right. So there are certain things that you have to own. You just, you know, there are guys that are dropping bombs out of out of uh, airplanes, and you hit a you, or out of a tank, and you, and you blow up a, a school or something. Well, you know, that's collateral damage, right? You know, and you got to own that, and that's something that I mean, hard to deal with. My God, man, well, can you imagine? That? That's that's why it's it's so hard now with the terrorists, right? Because they hide in hospitals, they hide in schools, they hide in yep. those type of places because they know that the U.S. has rules of engagement. Yeah. Where they will not, and they're using human shields, right? And that's when the, the type of bomb or missile that killed the the last guy, the head of the yeah, in, Af- in Af- did you hear Afghanistan. what hear what kind of missile that was? A bunker bomb? No, or, no, 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 no. He it, was it, on a patio. He of was a on hotel. a patio, and it's a type of small missile that came in there, and it shot out a bunch of blades and shredded them. Wow! And they and they studied. They had they were on him for weeks. He was living in a hotel, and they saw his routine where he would go out on the patio right. and have a coffee or something. And they were trying to minimize collateral damage because his family lived in the hotel as well. That's why they, that's why they use that type of 
weapon. So when the bomb, ex- when it, I should say missile, because when it's the not missile, a bomb, it was a missile. It, it, but when the missile hit the patio, did it just like? I don't hit think it? it hit the patio. I think it exploded right before it. I mean, I don't know, but it. They they said that a bunch of blades came out and just cut the guy apart. Well, there there are very sophisticated munitions out there. Unbelievable. I mean, they've got these bullets that fit in these super large fifty caliber bullets. I'm sorry, uh, guns. These bullets are smart enough that. It, it's going to know that it's going to go through a cinder block wall, and it's going to explode after the cinder block wall. Right. That's amazing. Amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, it knows to hit the wall and explode before it exits the next wall. Well, that, and and I read that there was uh, munitions that changed the battlefield in Afghanistan, where uh, they could launch. It was a grenade launcher, and they could tell they could program when it should explode. So they would lob it over the wall where those guys were shooting at them, lob it over the wall, and they knew exactly how long it would take to get over the wall and explode just past the wall. They could literally tell the... the like they had their iPhones out and says, all right. <laughs> so you're Amazing. Saying, so you could just you could say, all right, I want it to go off in five seconds as soon as it's launched. Right. Or you're... Because, I mean, I, I think it would be... Because they more... know how far the distance is, right? I yeah. guess the gun, you can... Oh, in, I see what you're infrared, saying. Okay. They know that the, the wall is 37 feet away. They need well, it to even, explode even, 39 feet well, away. Well, even, even hand grenades way back in the day, they're timed, right? So you pull the pin and you have, yeah, but what, seven seconds? Time was time. To throw it? Well, I know, but the, the, that ability, it wasn't quite as refined <laughs> back then, but it's been there, yeah. right? Well, yeah, but... For as uh, badass as it is, or, or the, the, the potential for it to be is... Uh, you know, you don't hear a lot of those stories, you know, and that maybe those are special stories that are are limited to like the uh, SEAL team. Well, some people know? don't talk about it. Yeah, my that's dad probably really, what it is. My dad doesn't really talk about his military yeah. experience much. My brother-in-law doesn't talk about it much. Right? Yeah, I, I think a lot of guys just bury it. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I mean, they don't want to talk about it. It is, uh, you know. Yeah, even even my conversations with Alan, and they were late night, you know. Having a drink, you know, and he 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 admitted, I've never told anyone this before. I, I yeah. haven't. And he says, I haven't thought about this or talked about this since I left. I'm extremely Vietnam. privileged to to yeah, have been there that night and was sober enough to to understand what to he was remember saying. It, yeah, <laughs> because it was such an incredible story what he was telling. Yeah, and it's just like man, it it is a story worth telling. Someone somebody that that. Came out of the war with three purple hearts and a silver star, has a story, and his is uh, has the has the the merit to to make a movie. Yeah, I mean it really does. I mean just the stuff he did. That, that's like a good morning Vietnam. Yeah. kind of story, you know. Yeah, because no, that was sure. kind of an interesting one. You know, going back to the munitions, I'm surprised that, and, and maybe this is obviously going to be a future thing, but that they haven't just to develop a laser that can zap a single person and kill them. You know what I mean? I know that's kind of Star Wars. Like a laser. I'm yeah. thinking they kind of do. I mean, from a, like so they can like for that dude that was on the patio, <laughs> literally a, a a military satellite. <laughs> what is the movie that shoots a laser, vaporizes the uh, guy? Yeah, I don't know if that exists yet. Oh, it doesn't, but no. it so will. It's the the that that is coming. That's the part of the Star Wars program, and the Star Wars program it was by Reagan. Is yeah, it was started oh, by Reagan. It was. Well, that wasn't based, designed to kill people. That was designed to knock down ICBMs. ICBMs. However, there there were other components to the Star Wars program right. uh, that that involved lasers, and that was out at what, there we go White Sands Missile Range. I had to think about where that was in New Mexico because it was just uh, west of Fort Bliss. Because I remember my dad would have to frequent out there, you know, for yeah. his job. But they have a lot of interesting stuff going on. As far as that laser, uh, what was the name of that damn movie? Uh, Real Genius or? Uh, with the popcorn, with Val Kilmer, yeah, was a real genius. Yeah. Yeah. With the popcorn, yeah, or, was that, it, or was it Top Secret? No, it wasn't Top no, Secret. It, it, you got it. Real it, genius. Real genius. It was real genius. I thought that movie was fantastic, and I, I love the guy, the 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 real real genius guy, where he's has all these. Was it a Doritos? Uh, sub, where they turn in the little uh, no purchase necessary, where he submits all these these coup-proof, uh, coupons, no proof of purchase necessary, and he submits all these things into the sweepstakes, mm-hmm. and he says, I want them all. I got a trip. I got a truck. I got, a, <laughs> I got all, all this stuff. I thought it was it's fantastic. It's been a long time since I've seen that. Yeah, I don't remember that at all. This is God. Oh, my God. You, 
You have seen it, no, though, I've right? I've seen it, yeah, oh. 30 years ago. Yeah, it was, it was a long time ago. Yeah. Oh, man. He had the one of his friends that was a douchebag that tried stealing a lot of uh, their their uh, secrets because it was kind of like an MIT school. Yeah, you know, that's Dealing what exactly with a lot was, of uh, yeah. high-end technology. And one of the competitors that were there had braces, and he used the braces as an antenna and put a little uh, speaker in, so in his mouth. To him. And he was talking to him like he was God and <laughs> making him do different things. And I think I by the way, that. stop masturbating. And he was like, it is God. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. It was dumb. Yeah, well, now the, the whole Star Wars thing, the thing that China just tested, the hypersonic missile yeah. that flies faster than well, we it can shoot down. It basically can't, can't be shot down. Yeah, the, our technology and our defenses can't shoot it down at this point. Right. So we're scrambling to, to try to fix that, I guess. Right. Well, we've launched our own hypersonic missile. Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple months after that, but that 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 was a big. Uh, How big is that hypersonic missile? What is its payload? How, what's the capacity? I'm sure, of its they can payload? put nukes on it. I'm sure they can. I mean, I don't know, I dude. Mean, I mean, if we ever to get be... to a point where we're using any of these weapons, we're in major. Well, I think major I think major Putin's trouble. come out recently. I saw the headline. I didn't read the article. It says there's not going to be any need for any nukes in Ukraine. So he's come out and said that now that no nukes will be used. Putin said that there's no need for it. I think he feels confident he's going to win. Well, of course he's going to win. No one's stopping him. Right. <laughs> no other one's than, stopping other, him. Other than Ukrainians. He's, he's strolled right on in there, and he's, he's taking it he's over. He's still losing his, a shit ton of... Oh, they've lost like 70,000 troops. Well, plus they, More they than just, Vietnam they just, in, in four months, five yeah, months. They he just, doesn't care. They he's, just blew up a bunch of planes. He's got shit loads of... Look, they, they sent all their 1970s... Uh, Old shit. And, uh, old, old tanks in there, jeeps, and just sending all that old shit in there. They don't give a fuck. They're trying to find... It's a tax write-off for him. Do they have new stuff? Unbelievable. I, well, I mean, I suspect they have a few, but well, that they, was the they spirit showed, They showed videos of them taking out some of their new tanks, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Because we're sending anti-tank missiles The javelins? Yeah. yeah. Well, man, the whole thing is... It's, it's a nightmare. And we've got two more years left of it, and I don't... You know, Biden's just doesn't have the balls. The, the the United States doesn't have the balls right now to do anything about it. And frankly, when uh, I don't know if I, I want to say when Trump gets in office, because but you know, who, if Trump doesn't get into office, who's gonna go? Who who's gonna take his place? Because the Democrats have really beaten themselves over the head. So I mean, who's gonna take uh, Trump's spot? Well, I mean, spot? Tr- Trump's gonna w- run. He's going to run. He's going to run. Now, because of that FBI raid, he's madder than ever before. Oh, my gosh. I mean, there's the stuff coming out now. Well, this is just falling apart of the Dems, or the FBI, anyway. Yeah, that was yeah, well, the FBI. I mean, even the FBI is turning in on themselves. They're they're turning around saying... Whistleblowers? Really, yeah, the whistleblowers are turning in information saying, uh, yep, that happened. Like, you know, well, Donald Trump was like, well, hey, they took my passports. Uh, and the, they were... I'm sorry. He was like... They took my passports. And then the CNN was kind of like, oh, look at Trump saying, oh, they took my passports. Well, the, the, yeah, that's the, not true. They wouldn't have taken your passports. Well, the, well, the Nora O'Donnell even tweeted out. Yeah, Ken, or CBS. Or CBS. Nora O'Donnell did. Yeah, saying, yeah. oh, that, well, they, they never took his FBI. And then, like, the next day. Yeah. <laughs> they said, I'm sorry, we're giving him back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we took two uh, expired uh, passports and, and his, one that was current. And his diplomatic passport. What's amazing is that. Garland, <laughs> right, the attorney general, sat on this for weeks. He had yeah. weeks to decide and whether or not. This was supposed to be an urgent thing. Yeah. All right, all right, here, here's the well, reason on top why. of that, he had weeks to decide if that was a good or bad idea. Yeah, but he didn't sign the. He didn't sign it. Reinhardt did. No, well, they submitted it to that to the judge to to clear it. Well, he had to sign off on Ford to get a final, right? It probably sat right. on his desk saying, "We want to do this." But the person who made the decision to do this was Merrick Garland, the attorney general. And uh, he had weeks to decide if it was a good or bad idea. Do, do you know that, Bruce? Do, so you know currently, right now, which is on the news anywhere, is that Trump is suing Hillary Clinton for defamation and r- right. wrongfully accusing him of the whole Russia uh, escapade. Russian hoax, yeah. So he's suing her. And the uh, there was, a I forget the original judge, the second judge assigned to the, was Bruce Reinhardt. And he had to recuse himself from from that lawsuit. From with, the lawsuit, he says yeah. I recuse myself because I don't like Trump, right? And I side with the how. Okay, my point by saying that is now, mm-hmm. if if he recuses himself because he's biased against Trump, then what? How does he have the authority to sign the affidavit? I mean the uh, search the, warrant. The, the the search warrant. I mean, I know 
It's crazy. And that doesn't make sense to me. He was so, a witch hunt from, from day one. Yeah. But he was screwed up in uh, with Epstein as well, right? That um, picture with him and oh, well, I sent Gazelle that, or whatever her name is. Uh, Ghislaine. Maxine. Is that real? Well, She's I don't know. Juggy. It looked she was. Yeah, yeah. I, I I thought that too. I was like, I don't remember her being juggy. In any oh no, she I've is seen. juggy. Huh, interesting. Yeah, she's anyway. got some. She got. They're right between a C and a D. They're they're <laughs> they're a nice spread. Wow, it's you like really, a C plus. You really yeah. zoomed in on that, didn't you? Oh, dude, I've. <laughs> wow. Okay. Were they fake? Uh, I don't know. No, I, I, you know, no, I tried not, I tried the, not, the not to test. dwell on that picture too much. But what is she? What she have in her hand? His feet. She was giving him a foot massage. Is that what that was? Yeah. And he he was taking his big toe and you know hitting her boobies off. Okay. Speed bagging it. Wow. Like a what? what are those? Like, like a, like a box, little box boxing bag. bags. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she got right. the little from. Anyways, whatever. It was. It was. A fun, it could have been a fake picture. I don't know. But the fact that it was just kind of like, wow. Was he really on uh, the island? Was I, Bruce I have, I, have a hard, on the island? I have a hard time believing pictures in memes and on the internet these days because they're getting so, so good at deep fakes. At deep fakes that you're just like. I don't know if it's real or not. Uh, it's hard. It's it, a problem. But was he on the what is it called the the register? What do they call that? The the list. The flight register the, or the, whatever, right? Flight manifest. Manifest. Right? Yeah. But was he on the manifest for those uh, I don't know. The hundred flights out there? I don't know. I mean, there are so many people that were on that manifest, and I was kind of like, why aren't these people being drug out and asked yeah, questions? Why is none of this being public? None of it. Publicized. And so it's just like, all right, well, there seems to be some sort of weird shit going on because well, there somebody's. Protecting somebody. I mean, but you and I are asking the question. You're like, why is this not happening? So why is it not happening? You know, my theory about why uh, one of the possible theories about why they raided his place is because maybe Trump was going to declassify shit like that. Well, he, he did declassify it. Oh, hold on. No, like Epstein. Well, Trump had a lot. Of, well, from what I understood, I don't know for a fact, but what they, what, from what I understood, he had a lot of those FBI papers in Mar-a-Lago. In That's what I'm boxes. saying. I, I, I think they were worried that he was that he was going to release sensitive information that the deep state and establishment could not allow to be released. That was going to hurt too many of their their buddies. Yep. And so that's why they went in and grabbed all that stuff. And now they're kind of scrambling. And go okay. Well, trying to come up with a good reason. Why were we really in there? Right. Yeah. That's that's he had some nuclear secrets that was going to give away. To that somebody. that to me is a very plausible, <laughs> right theory. Very no. possible. So we'll the, never know. You know, there are people out there. Oh, it's January sixth thing. You know, none of that's going anywhere. None of it has it gone did. anywhere. I but wonder, yet those I people wonder, are still sitting in jail. I wonder if Liz Cheney, now that she's lost her ass, is she's just going to go balls out through the rest of her term, through the rest of the year, and just is like, I don't give a shit. No, she said she's going to dedicate the rest of her career to continuing. Well, no, this. But, but while she's still in Congress. Oh yeah, no, she. I wonder if she's just going to go balls to the wall. And what is her beef? What did Trump already, do to well, her? Hold on, she already has been. Well, even more. Yeah, she will. Yeah, but what the did Trump she do to lose her? At this point. The answer is yes. What did he do to her? What did he do to her dad? I mean, I don't get it. Was he? She abhors him. Why though? What did he do to her? Hates him. To, I don't. I don't know. She thinks she's convinced that he is the devil when it comes to bad for America, bad for democracy, bad for. He's a liar. He's a cheat. He's a. He's a this. He's a that. I mean, all these. Yeah, but total BS. It's frustrating because here's the thing: if you're going to say something like that, you know, have some substance. Yeah, back so, up. Like, look, he's a liar because he said A, B, and C. Right. You know, he's a cheat because you know we caught him with this, this, and that. Yeah, this is Dick Cheney saying he's a coward and he's the worst thing, the worst threat to our democracy, or right, well, worst threat to our republic. It's like based on what? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, says it's, who? It's so easy to say that. Says who about anybody? Yeah, I mean, crazy. It, I don't, I don't get it, man. It's just, it's weird stuff. I'll never understand it, you know. But we're going to, we're going to be faced with it. We got two years of this torture, you know, and and and, and we're still waiting. There's, there's all kinds of things we're waiting for. I mean, uh, did that Durham report ever come out? No. I mean, what the fuck? What the no. hell? Why does it take? Why he's is still it... doing it? I don't think it's ever been released. He's had a couple of leaks or whatever you want to call them, but I don't think it's been fully released yet. Uh, I don't it's going to take it. him 20 years to do it. That, that, by the, that time, everyone's going to be dead. Yeah. Maybe yeah. That, yeah, maybe that's his strategy. He doesn't have to try anybody or, or indict anybody. Well, he's indicted the one person. They went to trial. And, and it was thrown out. It was thrown out because there were like nine Hillary 
people on the jury. Because it was in Washington, D.C. Yeah. So they were just like, yeah, he's not guilty. And look, I, I don't want to say like I'm a huge Trump supporter. I mean, it's not a matter. But you are. I, I do support Trump, but I support his his politics. I don't his support. I, I don't support his uh his his presidential spirit that he's got. You know, he he's he's not very presidential. No, part of it I think is, is kind not. of funny, but you know, at the other part of it, I'm kind of like, hey, come on, man. Enough. I mean, it's impossible. He can't tweet anymore, but no. he still has the ability to do the well, part I, of stuff. I think he's very presidential in certain settings, like when you see that he's visiting hospitals um, with, yeah. for injured folks. I've seen the footage. You don't see it on the news. No, You'll see not. it on, on the videos. Well, that they, they don't, they're never going to show him in a, they don't in show a good that. light. When he meets the first responders and stuff like that. And he, he loves them. He loves that. He's very presidential. But when he gets on that Twitter and he's going against... The Democrats is where he gets little wheels off. Yeah, the people that he doesn't like or don't like him. Right. He gets defensive and he acts like a 12-year-old well, bully. Well, what he does is he acts like a 12-year-old, but so does the other side. Mm-hmm. So he's just doing, he's replicating, and, I, and as a conservative. He drops to their level. He drops to the level, and as a conservative, if you've noticed over the years, no one has ever done that. It's always, we're not going to stoop to their level right? Become and become them. Well, Trump stoops to their level. Totally. It and that and that, and that goes against kind of how the conservatives think. Right. And they're kind of like, oh my God. Yeah, he they're just, like, it was like, it was he like, just called us out. Yeah. And it, even the conservatives are like, what are we going to wow, do? We don't do that. We don't stoop to their level. Well, he does. He totally does. And it drives the conservatives nuts who believe that the rhinos. I'm not a rhino, but, and I don't give a shit. You know, he can do what he wants. Right. Yeah. I, I just don't pay attention to it. Um, but it drives the Democrats nuts because no one's ever done it to him before. Well, it, it drives me nuts, too, because it's detracting from what we all care about, which is focus on the platform. Let's solve problems. Let's not. Why are we talking about stupid tweets and this and that? I mean, well, the, the reason is, is because the press reports on it. Right. If they just ignored his tweets, it'd go away. Yeah, well, I know. But, really but on, on right the there. flip side, if he didn't. Send out stupid tweets like that. Well, he's not going to do it. Anymore. And he would just focus on. Well, I mean, they're sending out. Look, he's got to defend himself. They're accusing him of I know, everything. I know. Yeah. You know, so I mean, but, but it, I think the I think his verbiage sometimes can be re- it part of the problem. Absolutely. Right. I mean, he could defend himself better. And, of course. And and, and more uh, have a little more cuth cuth. Right. Than he has protein. Right. <laughs> but he's just uh, he's just a the New cuth. York construction guy. You know, and that's really where what it comes to. I mean, yeah. he's, he's he's not a, a career politician. No, he's, and he's that's a, what we love about him. That's yeah, why we that, voted for him. We wanted like we we felt confident about kind of Ross Perot kind of mentality. He's not that. Like Sean became president. Would you expect him to change, or is he going to be no? What he is? Would you? What would you start acting like if you were president, dude? Like I would. I would have demeanor. a dudes like us podcast three <laughs> nights out of the week. <laughs> We would be eating president. We would in be the situation room? sipping on presidential bourbon. So you would invite us to the to the Oval you, Office, you, and we do podcasts from we, there. You guys would have your own wing. <laughs> oh, sweet! <laughs> I'll vote for you. Well, that's what I mean. It, it's well. It's, hold on. What's your platform? Uh, Trump. I, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whatever Trump did. Oh man, seriously. If if I were president, I I would I would start. I'd I'd be like fucking blue light special at Kmart. I would start slashing, 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 cutting government programs here, no. cutting programs there. But, but would you hold back? No. If the press started calling no. you out, that's what I mean. So you'd act like a twelve year old. We're calling Trump a twelve year old. I'm gonna go as far as six year old. <laughs> no. Here, well, here's the thing. They call they they call me out. I'm gonna call them out. You know, it, it, what is it? What is that? Uh, what is you, you 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 show up here with a knife. I'm gonna show up. I'm, I'm gonna show up here with a gun. You you bring a knife to the fight. I'm gonna bring a gun to the fight. You send one of yours to the hospital. I'm, I'm you send one of mine to the hospital. I'm gonna send one of yours to the morgue. I mean, uh, what was that? The inf- <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I couldn't is that fucking Mike say. Or okay, something? I'm, I can I, I think honest? it was Sean Connery, and uh, what was. <sighs> Harrison Ford? No, it was a movie about Ready taxes. For the so that's it was a movie about taxes and the guy. A movie the, about taxes. And, uh, uh, Sounds exciting. You know, just let it go. I, I'm trying Al Capone. To, yeah, it was Al Capone. It was with Sean Connery. It was the guy that. that oh, the. Oh, Untouchables. Uh, Untouchables. There you go. That's where Sean Connery was like, he's like he explains. Hey, they send one of yours to the hospital. You send one of those to the morgue. You know, he was just. 
that's that's that, it was a funny little spot they had to there. The morgue. But that's that's why I would talk about it because I'm kind of like fuck them. That's what he's doing. You know, yeah. fuck them. But that's what Trump's because doing. Because they're they're taking they're I mean, what is that the little the little uh, what he was out talking about when they did the march, some dude ran through with the with the car and he was like, Some of them are bad people. Oh, Charles. You know, on both sides. You know, he wasn't talking about the KKK. There were very fine people on both sides. Yeah, it was just like they took that and totally misrepresented it and used it as and a still platform. Do. Biden is has done it like like a month ago. I mean, did he really? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's it's still saying it. It's, it's a lie. It's a blatant lie. It's an absolute lie. Yeah. And when they do shit like that, it's just like and any quote no I read credibility. From, if I any quote I read from any politician that brings that up, I immediately I immediately say to myself, you have zero credibility. But it works. You have zero credibility. Because that, it doesn't matter repeating, if it's right yeah, or wrong. Yeah, you're repeating it's a lie. It's a matter of what the sheep Think I know, and the sheep are kind of like I never checked, uh, fact checked that. He's so I believe you. He's a racist. Oh my God, he's orange. Orange racist. Orange man bad. Yeah, it's just ridiculous, man. I mean, I, I see the I've obsession. Got, the obsession I've got a, is ridiculous. A friend of mine on Facebook. I have such a difficult time following him uh, because he and his friends just beat the shit up out of him. Oh, that fucking orange turd. You know, I'm just like God. Ah, what the hell? Is no. that, just uh, Biden's a wrinkled raisin turd. Orange turd. <laughs> orange turd. Uh, <laughs> Biden's a wrinkled yeah. raisin turd. Yeah. Uh, he's more like I don't know. You did. I saw. I watched the five <laughs> <laughs> yesterday, and they were talking about how the press is trying to re-image Biden, all based on his his aviators. Oh God. Yeah. Wasn't that there... he's back. He's back, and he's in his aviators. And he's bad. He's he's awesome. Oh, dark Brandon. He's, no, but he's they, bad. But he's they were, back and but he's they were dogging off. him. Right? They were making fun of it. No, the press. No, the five. Well, the five were. There was like, yeah, the five were making fun of the press for saying Biden's back. They're trying to reignite that image. What does that, that mean? That, back from vacation? I mean, back from where? He's uh, back. Back from, from the, COVID. Ever since he got back from COVID. Oh my God. He's in his. He's in his aviators. <laughs> And he looks like he's Tom. back from the him, tapioca they pudding compared tasting. Him to Tom Cruise. Oh, I'd be an idiot. Gun. I'd be horribly offended if I were Tom Cruise. <laughs> Tom Cruise, Lord have mercy. That's Top Gun was crazy. a good movie. It was. Yeah, I don't know if we talked about that. The Top Gun was kind of fun. I mean, that's another movie, not very cerebral, but it was a lot giant jam packed fun. I yeah, Rotten Tomatoes. I'd be, gave I'd be that. curious. What was the Rotten Tomato score on uh, Tom uh, on the on the Top, Top Gun. Gun on Top Gun Two? It was too <sighs> masculine. Yeah, well, that's a hundred percent too masculine, and it was a total repeat of the. Well, top, uh, but Tom Cruise is Democrat, though. Did you put in? Is uh, he? Yeah, Rotten Tomatoes. There we go. Let's see what we got here. Sharp uh, stick. Well, there you go. Fifty-seven percent. Oh, that's the first one. Oh, the first one. No, we want the second one. All right, let's see. Ninety-six percent. Okay, how is that possible? How is that possible? That defies all logic. What about top critics? 99. I don't know. 99% of the critics love that movie. Yeah. All right, well, that I, makes no sense. This has to be one of the highest ranked ones. I'll tell you one, one difference, and it has to do with left and right. I, I liked it, guys, but I didn't think it was that great. No. 96 and 99? No, it, it was an action... Ninety six percent of the critics liked it. I can't believe it. Yeah, it's a little nuts. Yeah, because it's military and it's eh. it was basically a repeat of the first movie. Oh my god, they 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 could have said all the same shit yes. that they did with Chris Pratt on this one. But right. they didn't. Right. I mean it's just it th- this is an example I can't in a microcosm it. of the bullshit. Twisted. Well, there's a lot of folks in the in the Hollywood area who do not like Chris Pratt because he's a Christian. He's a Christian, outspoken Christian. Correct. That's exactly why they that his rating is so low. I'll Correct. tell you one th- one funny blooper from Chris Pratt. He was uh, it, who's the blonde girl on? It's all uh, a pro- Austin Farrah Fawcett. Austin, what is the name of the, Ooh, the this show? This would be fun. Cheryl Ladd. Cheryl Ladd. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, another blonde. blonde. Parks, Carter. It's Parks no, and Recreation. With uh, who was he? Kathy Rigby. No, the cast. Oh, good, good guess. Please pull it up. <laughs> good guess. She did the no, OB the commercials. Oh yeah, yeah. It's no, Amy that's Poehler. A really good one. Amy Poehler. <laughs> so Amy Poehler is Leslie. Have you How guys watched? Suzanne Summers. Have you guys watched uh, Parks and Recreation? Uh, no. Really? 
though. Oh, it's it's a funny sitcom. Is I mean, it, uh, what's his name in there? The guy from uh, Ozarks. Chris, well, Chris Pratt's in there. Yes. No, no. Jason Bateman was in uh, Arrested, Arrested Development. Development. Yeah, which I get was those funny. two. I get those two mixed Arrested up. Arrested Development was good. So Amy Poehler's in your. I tried Plaza. to watch it. My my wife wouldn't get past the first couple episodes. No, you need to. It's good. Which one? Arrested, Arrested Development. Development. Oh, yeah, that one's good too. But this one, Parks and Recreation, is funny with Chris Pratt because one of the things that Chris Pratt he got in trouble uh, was when Amy Poehler had answered the door in one of the the little scenes. He was he was. Uh, he was living in a ditch behind the house temporarily because he had a tent down there and he was mad and, and what for whatever reason. And it was raining. He had his clothes off and he, you know, the bloopers, he opened up the door and he was naked. He didn't have anything on. <laughs> and then he got in trouble by the network because he did that. And they, they kind of blew it over. But you know, it was just one those are the, t- that's the type of mentality he is. He's just an idiot. Oh, well, I mean, I don't know. He's is a fun he? guy. Fun yeah, guy. I mean, just I mean, he's fun. I mean, he's funny. So did he when they when he made Gal- Guardians of the Galaxy, which is brilliant, brilliant movie, the first movie. Um, did they know he was an outspoken? But hold on, yeah, I need I I I want to get there, but we're we're talking about Chris Pratt, where he's at in his career, in his career right now. This right here, this one show set him up for success. Yeah, sure. I mean, because he was... He well, they start... all get their beginning somewhere, right? Well, well, true. But, I mean, he he didn't start off as the star on this one, but he became a major, major part of this this uh, this the sitcom. Okay. I mean, because he was just funny. He was naturally funny, and everyone naturally liked him. And, and he was you know, fat. And and he was not as healthy as yeah. he is right now. Really? Yeah. He didn't so st- this one's called Parks and Rec? Yeah. Parks Par- and Recreation. I, I've started the first season, I'm probably about four or five in. This is where they've uh, and it's kind of like the modern family thing where it's the one camera kind of a thing. Uh-huh. Pull up uh, Nick uh, Nick Offerman down there. Now he uh what's Ron Swanson. Yeah, he's you've heard of Ron Swanson, right? I've heard the name. Oh, Ron Swanson is like the well that's not sure. Ron Swanson is the masculine guy that he's got the mustache and he, he eats meat and bourbon and scotch. Oh, I know exactly who that and is. And he's he's so uh, he's, well, isn't he basically what uh Anchorman. He he was an Anchorman, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. But he was in Anchorman, wasn't he? No, he, but I, mean, I think it's based. It, the character's got to be based on this. Guy. It, it is, but this is. Uh, but he is a the hardcore right Republican, right? Where he doesn't want any uh, Republican uh, uh, government. You uh, know, he, he gets mad. He has to pay taxes. You know, and right, and he's supposedly super wealthy. You know, because I started working in a sawmill when I was seven. <laughs> you know, and he is, he is just like, I just want to <laughs> prove to you that I could have driven home drunk last night. Here's proof. I whittled this. Uh, he whips out this violin, you know, and it's all this masterpiece. <laughs> and after that, I finished the rest of this bottle. And to prove to you, I held up the newspaper, you know, with the today's date on there. And this, you know, and. Well, he goes into a restaurant and he orders the food and it's a breakfast. And he was like, I want the uh, something platter. He says, sir, that feeds eight people. He was like, <laughs> you know. And? and? He goes to this next, another restaurant. He was like, uh, they was like I would like a, a porterhouse steak. He's like, sir, we don't have steak. And he, was, he looks at the guy. He's like, are you kidding me? He's like, look at me. I want you to bring all the eggs and bacon you have back there. <laughs> Waiter, come back. All the eggs. I just want to make sure I'm not talking. I want all the eggs and bacon. So they give him a bunch of funny one-liners. Oh, man. That's all that's, he is. He's okay, fantastic, all right, because man. Because all the little pictures I'm seeing here uh, is, yeah, it's uh, all. He's, uh, he, he, they, they have a, an office uh, park party, and he's bringing... He's bringing the food, the meat, and he's got the smoker, and he's got this fucking pig that's alive. And... <laughs> <laughs> and the cops like, you're not gonna slaughter that now. And he was like, I was thinking everyone could play with it and then we can eat it, you know. <laughs> and he's like, I'm sure there's a health code or uh, something about that. And he reaches in his pocket and he pulls out this official p- document from Parks and Recreation, and it says, I'm Ron Swanson. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> Hands it to him. I mean, it's just funny. If you so haven't I, so seen I need it, to watch both of those then. Parks I and highly Rec recommend and Arrested Development. Yeah, they're they're very funny. I got my first job when I was nine. Worked at a sheet metal factory. In two weeks, I was running the floor. Child labor laws are ruining this country. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. That's Anyways, great. Classic stuff. His mustache. And plus his his wife in his real wife is the Burnett uh on you know, what is that? The two gay men and uh, skinny girl. Will and Grace. Yeah, Will and Grace. So there was Will and Grace, and then it was the Grace's person that she worked for, that black haired lady. Yeah. Well, anyways, that's Ron Swanson. That's his wife in real life. And on the Parks and Recreation, she plays his girlfriend. That's the crazy bitch that comes from hell. And he uh, he divorces her. And then once in a while, she comes back in the show, and he kind of goes crazy. He comes back, and he's got his hair braided, and the middle of his mustache is, is missing. And they're kind of like, what the hell happened to your mustache? She's like, I rubbed it raw. <laughs> I rubbed it raw? Oh, great. Oh, I don't know. I guess you had to watch the show. <laughs> it's one of these things where I, I sit there and I watch the show every single night. Because it's one of those things where it's like, what, 15 seasons? Ridiculous amount of shows? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. the way we are about uh, Everybody Loves Raymond. We can just, <sighs> we've watched every episode probably five times. Never watched yeah. it. Oh, yeah, shit. that's funny. That's a it's funny show. It's fantastic. I it watched Seinfeld either. It may be one of the best shows I've ever seen. I, I'm watched, I'm start, I've watched... I've watched Seinfeld for the last two, three months now. Yeah, I haven't. Just I've all those episodes. I haven't watched too many of that of, of Seinfeld. I need to go back and watch that series. They're all, all funny, man. If you can get back into them, they're just all all those sitcoms. Uh, they offer a lot. I highly recommend Parks and Recreation because of the diverse group that's on there. They have everything. Leslie Nope runs for Congress. I mean, or uh, it's just you know they have Aziz on there, the comedian. He's funny as hell because he's lazy as shit, and he tries to not do anything. They have it, look, it looks funny. It, I mean, I'm just we're just watching a little clip. Oh, I like her. I forgot her name. Uh, she's very attractive. She uh, really is. He whittled. did you know that the food you eat becomes oh. energy? Boom! That's spaghetti. Nachos. That's my husband. Own the series that critics call the funniest show on TV. Period. One could say that we are having a moment. Um, Rob Lowe, I like him too. Amy Poehler. If I was sick, could I do this? I could totally watch this show. Cartwheels. With TV's funniest ensemble cast. Believe in me. Now, watch every episode back to back. This will be no fun at all. Loaded with all new bonus features. One, two, one, two. Including extended episodes, deleted scenes, and hilarious gag reels. Oh my god, a 98% <laughs> match? Let's see what you got. Ah! Parks and Recreation, own it on DVD. <laughs> I think it's on Netflix. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, we'll start watching that. That'll be fun. Because uh, it's upbeat and funny, right? Right. Uh, Sometimes we're just watching too many de depressing shows. Depressing shows, yeah. 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 That, that's yeah, definitely really. one that, that takes you away from politics. I mean, there there are a few little slams in there. They go... Yeah, I'm watching The Sandman now. I'm two episodes in. And it's uh, uh, we gave up on it. It's interesting, but it's just like Parks, Parks and Rec is Austin no. approved it's show. Blah. We now do you you did watch the same? No, I've gotten two episodes. We, in. Oh, we, it's tough, man. Well, we were really excited to watch it, and we made it through maybe two episodes, and we said, but "Did it get dark?" Oh, it's just dark the whole time. No, you got to get past that. And I mean, if if Forget you can, if you can get through it, it's it has merit. I'm out. There's, after what we've after what we've already watched, there is no way we'll, we'll pick not, it back up. It's not necessarily butt sex, but there's just way too much. I mean, look, Monkey I get pox. it. I get it. I get it. There's an agenda, but come on. I mean, what's, every, the, what's the agenda? It's just the the the, the homosexual. Uh, it's just it's woman on well the woman on one was fine but I mean they were like <laughs> <laughs> of course but they it had was. well they only had one you know and then the, there were like four different dudes on dudes and I'm like come on first of all that's not real all right there's the ratio is just it's just not there you know it, it, <laughs> it's what frustrates me is why they have to show guy on guy when they're not even showing guy on girl. Yeah, that's just it. I don't I mean, even want. They're not even showing heterosexual couples kiss it's, it's or the, show, uh, but they're but they're showing two guys together all the time, like making out and stuff. I'm like, and it doesn't add anything to the program. Nothing, nothing no. at all. I mean, the only thing I could tolerate is girl on girl. That's it. I can't handle anything <laughs> else. I don't want to see the guy on girl. I just it's overrated. You don't want to yeah. see the guy's butt. 
good job. Yeah. I don't see I could pass stuff. on all that. Yeah. Yeah, and the sucky thing is that these guys are so fucking pretty. You kind of look at it at first, you're like, hey, oh, oh. Well, I tell you what. So you, you fooled you, me. I looked really hard for a second. The guy that plays second. the Sandman looks anorexic to me. Yeah, he's gross. When he was naked oh, in, in, the, that, in the, the ball. Sphere? Yeah, I was just like, dude, he's put some, some weight on. He looks bad. Like terrible, and and he's he brings nothing to the table. His acting is is just and he just talks like this. And you know. Yeah, he's he's nothing. I was just like, this is a waste of time. We both were like done. Yeah, not I'll, going back. I'll finish it, but I'm only two in though. Yeah, well, you know, you <laughs> now we're out. <laughs> you gotta you gotta go all the way in. Oh, all the way yeah, in. all yeah. the way in. No, look, just do it. Look, I don't care if you watch it or not. I I um I struggled. I watched it. The whole it, thing. It was extremely painful. There, <laughs> there is, there is one episode specific where it just got really bloody, and that one was where I almost said, "I'm done." Have you guys heard of the show called The Boys? I've watched it all. Is that like superheroes? Yes, I've watched it all. I, I haven't recommend it. I. So I recommend it. It's I'm, good. It's, I'm, it's that's harsh. another thing. It's it's difficult to watch. I it's mean, very gory. I stopped watching when that lady was like trying to nominate a new s- star or a new superhero, and some blind dude or something he rips off his glasses or something. his ear. Was that what it was? I don't know. I, I don't know. He fucking he it's ripped pretty it gory. off. Yeah, it, it was. Come on, man. Just, I haven't given up on that one. We've watched, I think, two episodes of that one. Well, wait till you get to the first episode of the final season. There's a. <laughs> I don't want to give it no, away. Don't give it away. Don't give it away. Because we'll probably go back and watch that one. Because it I'm is, still on the second season. Well, wait. It's the first episode, like 15, 20 minutes in, if that far. You, you'll know what it is. And it's just like, oh, my God. Just, it's yeah. just way over the top. Yeah, they were. And there's, it's violent. They're not afraid to touch anything was in it, that show. Was apparently. it gay? Was it? Yes, yeah, some of it was. Oh. But at the end of it, you're just like. Oh, Holy wow. shit! I can't believe that just happened. Well, they already showed oh, full he... full frontal on the dude, the the invisible dude in the bathroom. Oh, full frontal! I was like, oh, okay. Well, they Not used full to fr- seeing that. Well, they sh- well, the, well, the big push now is if they could show full frontal on the girl. Why is it an equal time showing well, full frontal? Well, first off, they're the not guy. showing full frontal of the girl. They're just showing her topless. Well, but that's why they're they're doing. So, okay, that. show men topless. They do all the time. Exactly. So, what's the problem? Yeah. So they want some junk vision. They, oh yeah, some of the ladies, yeah, because now they're in the producers and directors chair. They're like, well, let's show the guys junk instead of the girls. So it's just becoming junk TV. We're just not used to seeing that, right? But yeah, I, the boys, boys is very to. good. Well, I, I would, would prefer, prefer not to. Yeah. I'm just like uh, yeah. a lot of it's prosthetics. It doesn't matter. I want a junk free TV. Yeah, junk free TV on that both means sides. No nudity for the women as well. I said junk. I don't call anything a woman has as junk. Well, not if you junk. can't have one, you can't have the other. So who who's who not makes junk? that rule? Well, the producers and directors. All right, so okay, we don't show vaginas, we just show penises. Well, they show the Merkins. Mer- the well, Merkin. <laughs> That's right. Well, look, if the Merkin is covering, <laughs> what, what the, is that? The... An, an over, an over hairied. <laughs> no, a Merkin is a is a toupee it's for a pube wig. A pube wig. It's a it's a toupee well, for the right. for the 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 taco. Pube wig, wig, wig. Oh my god. The Merkin. I remember that the be, Merkin. You tried. You stumped that you, us with yeah. that fucking uh, about a year ago. You <laughs> said, "Oh, uh, something of a Merkin." And we're both like, "What?" Uh, here we, we had go. to Google Let's that up. Google. We went down yeah. the rabbit hole. Yes, oh, I just posted yeah. that one. Yeah. Did you? Yes. It said, "Was a fresh in your mind." I'm gonna use that word again. <laughs> yeah, Merkin. Got to say Merkin. We right. were prepared. Right. That and all new. No, well, the boys. Uh, boys. Boys are really good because it's the the superheroes, uh, but they're. They're not very nice superheroes. They're, uh, they're very of, flawed. Uh, speaking of boys, very flawed. Uh, we, you know, Jeff and I. Uh, well, even you. I mean, we went and uh, took the me. boys back to to school, back to college. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So it was a yeah, dudes like off. us moment where you bring the kids back to school and. This is say, the third year. Ya. Well, this is well, fourth year for Brandon, but he never left, so he went to summer school. Right. But yeah, third year for Stephen and Preston. Yeah. Third year. And for Dawson, yeah. Yeah. Because so I, um, I had 10 hours of driving, and I was there for less than, I don't know, less than 12 hours. <laughs> I don't know how long I was there. Yeah, that's a tough drive, man. I could imagine that. That's Five hours suck. each way. It's kind of brutal. But if you take yeah. the back roads, I, I love the back roads. 
Yeah, it's but, a really nice drive through eastern Oklahoma. I guess it depends. I mean, uh, I don't know. My wife won't travel, so it's difficult. I enjoy. It. I I agree. I I try taking the 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 road less traveled. Uh, this particular thing with our trip, it was more of a straight back no, and forth. We 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 had some. Well, you had more of a detour than uh, I yeah, did. A little uh, bit because uh, Stephen had a mattress because we had to write a U-Haul because they have to furnish their house this time so they have sofas and mattresses and stuff so we had to stop on the way down there uh just outside of waco because steven has uh, some friends down there uh, his girlfriend has some actually family down there uh and they had a mattress oh so there. that's where you picked up stuff yeah so we picked yeah. up a mattress there and we we're all planning on meeting there well we all got separated because uh well, i left early yeah sean left and then well you know here the drama the night before, Jeff comes over bitter. All right, we're not going to get too much into that. We'll just leave it at that. So we're like, all right, because you know what? Honestly, the day was late, and we're still fucking around. I got the, I had the truck at four thirty, five o'clock ish. I get it. Yeah, and, I thought you guys were leaving it f- uh, Friday morning. And, well, we did. Well, we did. But the oh. thing is that we're supposed to. You know, there was a bunch of people just dragging their feet. The boys both were. They're right. just kind they of dragging ready. their they feet. They weren't packed. You know, they and, weren't this. They weren't and they're, that. They're working out and, and just whatever. So you know, and then we start loading up the truck, and then Jeff's kind of like, "I'm not fucking staying up this late." And so he comes over and he's letting everybody know that. So <laughs> we're, I was like, "All right, well, we're we're taking the truck over to your house because I don't want to leave late." He doesn't want to work late, and I don't want to leave late the next morning. Right. So, you know, we'll just compromise. I'll go over to his house first. We'll load everything up, and then I'll stay up. Because I stay up late anyways. I stay up late. I work up. I wake up early. It doesn't matter to me. So, that's you know, we ended up going over there, loading everything up. Guess who wasn't ready in the morning? Steven. Yeah. No, it was me. I, I don't care who it was. We came over here early. Ready, ready to roll. <laughs> Ready Come to go. On, let's go. Hey guys, let's go. And you know, you know, something's no, was not about, ready. It was about ten minutes. It wasn't real bad, but it was about ten minutes. I was pushing his ass. I was like, you know, we need to be. They're on their way. They're on their way. They're on their way. So we're about ten minutes behind. And uh, it ultimately worked out. Yeah, it I worked just out. Took off. It, it worked out really well. He left because uh, he was in the truck. I figure he'll be going the slowest. He actually was fucking going 100 miles an hour. Dude, that truck, truck goes. Uh, it, it it goes nice. It, it goes about 80. It it does 80 to 85. <laughs> it, it does about 84 easily. It got about four miles per gallon. <laughs> yeah, probably. No, it. it I, there's a, well, whatever. So anyway, I went down. <laughs> I, I originally I, I gave bad directions. We had to go down Waco, which is down 35. Right. I said, well, let's meet at that Bucky's, which is down 45. Ooh, that's way over there. Yeah, so I was driving down 75 at the time, and I called Sean. And I was like, hey, I had it all wrong. I was like, and I, luckily I got a hold of him before he got to those yeah, 45, I was just 35, about to hit there. Split. I was like, <laughs> go down 35. I was like, I had it wrong. We're not meeting at Bucky's. Let's meet at this place instead. And then that changed because, like, there's no need to meet at And this he calls point. me, and I'm like, fuck, I got to get my phone. I Hold up, pause. Pause Netflix. Okay, hold on. All right. Yeah, while you're driving so 100 miles an hour the whole in a thing truck. Out and it's, right. All right, that's not a problem. I'll, we'll, I'll go to the check stop. See, it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't right. a big deal. And I took off, and I was like, boom. Went straight to, dude, I'm, I was straight. Well, I, I, got stuck in some, I got stuck in some really nasty traffic. Uh, I sidestepped that shit. Yeah, I got stuck in some really nasty traffic. So I was behind. And uh, we were supposed to meet at I got so this, lucky. this place in Waco. The accident was like two exits in front of me. And I was like, pulled over to the side, went off the exit, passed it. I was like, boop, and just went off because yeah. it wanted to. I'm surprised it didn't send you down Preston first. No. So anyway, <laughs> then we we're going to go to, we we're going to meet at the, the, these people's house right. to get the mattress. Well, I was so far behind that, and Stephen was even in front of me. That I was actually exiting to take the that exit, and Stephen texted me. He goes, "Sean's already picked up the mattress. is on his way to College Station." I was like, "What?" <laughs> so I pulled over. I was like, "I'm not going to go there if I don't have to." Right. You know, twenty minutes off the highway, and then twenty minutes back. Right. And so I called him. He's like, "Yeah, I'm on my way. Let's just meet at the house." So I was like, "All right." Well, Stephen felt obligated. He still went to their house because it's their his friend. Well, his girlfriend's family. Right. Right. So he went and he visited, ate some food, visited. So he showed bitch. up late. He lay, he showed up about forty five minutes after We're starving. we did. For sure, yeah. And um, so <laughs> it, it all worked out great. We all met down there. I got there ahead of Sean um, by about fifteen minutes. 
and uh, started unloading shit. He pulled up, started the boys unloading. It's really the big that shit. much stuff, huh? For a whole U-Haul. You know, it wasn't. It wasn't really that much. Uh, we had a twenty footer, and they had it full, but it, it, they didn't have it full from the top to bottom. It was just poor load in. Right. You know? yeah. And it, I, I blame myself. I, I should have been well, more on top out. of it. Well, it worked. Yeah. It was fine. We didn't need any more room. It was a sofa. It was a sectional. It was a kitchen Excuse table me. with four Excuse chairs, three mattresses because Preston had two of them. Three mattresses, box spring, uh, dresser, nightstand. Yeah, so it's a lot like of that. shit. So it's a lot of shit. And and Preston has this humongous bean bag that basically took up half the truck. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it was huge. It's huge. It's a love sack, and it's it's extremely. It would fill up half this room if it was that's that big. What what color is it? It's, it's blue. It's bright a big blue. blue. And it's got like <laughs> semen all over it. It's, oh, good. <laughs> so you could see that. It's well, a love. It's a love sack. Well, he didn't even want to touch it. Yeah, he, oh, yeah, he didn't. Did he? Oh, he was he like, did. I know what's been on, on that. Uh, <laughs> Lord. Yeah. Uh, it's fucked up because when we we uh, we ended up getting it upstairs, and then his roommates were all like on it, and like, oh, this is so comfortable, and they're kind of like, and I was like, good. Somebody. Feel that stiff spot right there? Yeah, you might that. want to peel that off. That's of you. not frosting. <laughs> Just flake it. Just kind of uh, flake it off. Uh, anyway. All right, so, so they moved into a house? Moved into the house, and it's nice. A it's house. a nice house. Yeah. And it's actually less expensive than the apartment they're right? in. No, it doesn't surprise me. Apartments are ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, well, Especially a, in Cold Station. Well, yeah. they have a, well, the apartments offer a lot more as far as like you know the amenities they have out there, which they, they never really took advantage of, of it. Any of that. It's ridiculous. And, and really, because of the COVID, they didn't offer a bunch. I, I feel as if contractually, they should have provided a discount for, the, for, for them because, you know, this was closed. Gym was closed. The pool was closed. This was yeah, closed. and they're like, well, "Well, it's not our fault. It doesn't matter, man." It, it, you know, it, if you have something and it includes A, B, and C, and you take out A, B, and C, what's the value it's of it? It's no then? different than schools that said, "Okay, you got to do it online, and we're going to charge you the same amount." Yeah, they did do oh, that. Well, that's it's bullshit. Man. Total bullshit. Yeah, I paid the same amount for Brandon. Yeah, so they, they did it online. online. I was like, "You can do that in the house. You don't have to live there." Right. Now, well, they, you know, this only supports the the whole school thing as a racket, anyways. Look, the bottom line is, th- you know, you, you can take your CE classes for work. Uh, you know, it, it's the same thing as you can do for college. Right. You know, it's, come on, it, it's blown out of Porsche. But the boys, they uh, they live in a nice place. They live in a nice place. Uh, they've got uh, better roommates. Hold on, let me rephrase that. That's really not what I meant to say. What I meant to say was that the roommates that they have are a little OCD. So it's Stephen and, and Preston, and they're just different from their other roommates. They're right. just a little OCD. They're like little. I don't want to say they're cleaner, but you know, it's like they were walking around us cleaning up. Yes. Yeah, I'm like, well, like this a, house like is a rag be and a little squirt bottle. Yeah. Oh, he touched there. Oh wow. Yeah. John touched his ball sack there. I took a I took a poop there, wiped my butt. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So so we moved them in, and it was yeah they're they're for the most part self sufficient. Right, so they they yeah. did it themselves. Uh, Sean helped hang the the TV, um, which was an exercise of just Home Depot runs. Yeah, it just kind of got. It was just you know you try coming prepared with with different things and tools and stuff, and you're like fuck. You always forget something. I buy ratchet set. Yeah, you did. You did, man. Didn't use it, but it ended up working out. You know, uh, we ended up going to Home Depot picking up some stuff, and it worked out. That's really the bottom line. And we hung up another TV, that little tiny TV up in the kitchen. Yeah, that's nice. That's a nice little that, uh, feature. Yeah, it really is. It worked out great. Yeah. The next morning, they were all watching it in the kitchen. I know. Huh. Yeah. So yeah, it's nice. They got a backyard. Uh, you know, Sean calls it a goat trail because it's pretty much just <laughs> dead grass. It's like straw back there. Yeah. <laughs> it does. It does. It's, well, like it's a, nice. They have a. So I hope they don't smoke. They had a patio. Uh, they need to get like like you said. I think if they get like a ten by ten canopy. Yeah. What, they, what do they call those things? Canopy. Is that it? Just yeah, a ten by ten. Or, yeah, or, they, you know. You know. Uh, do they make smaller ones yeah, like? They, uh, they get like eight by eight. You can get yeah. those. I think an eight by eight. Or do they make? Do they make eight by tens? Uh, Different denomination I don't know. there. I don't eh, know. Whatever. I mean, a little landscape. I, I mean, really, that'd be a cool little back area if uh, if they can if they can cover that whole back section back there. They could do that. Yeah. So the uh, the boys' trip was successful. Yours was pretty successful. Yeah, it was. I mean, and they also did the same thing. They moved out of an apartment uh, and into a house, and it's a nice house. 
I mean, it's a, uh, you know, how many fa- people fairly in the new. House? Uh, so it was originally going to be four, and now it's going to be five because one of the bigger rooms they're going to split. Uh, you know, two, they're going to two guys are going to share it. Oh, now you get a discount. Yeah, so That's five nice. guys in the in the house. Now Dawson's room is pretty small, but it was awesome. We we hooked it all up. We you know I h- hung a TV and you don't two, need much in college. No, uh-huh. you don't. I mean, he's got a really a kind of a sweet setup, uh-huh. um, and you he's really happy. Placed- he was really thankful and really excited. And you know what I mean, and that's and that's exactly why we did it. Like you wonder why we drive ten hours. I mean, he can fend for himself, you know that kind of thing. Um, but that's what we do. You know, we want them to be excited about being in a new place and well, we need, and we, show they, that they support. They want us to. They right? want us to bless it. You know. Yeah. Directly and directly, they want us to to bless it. Because well, I, I mean, they want us to 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 kind of pimp it out, help them pimp it out. You know, and make it their <laughs> own right. little own own little crib. You know, I mean. I mean, dude, he's got a 50-inch TV hung on the wall uh, right at the base of his bed. I mean, that's nice. come on. And a yeah. sound bar. And, a, you know, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, you know, entertainment's that's, awesome. I mean, the trip down there, I was doing nothing but listening to musicals. I didn't even have a uh, TV musicals. when I was in college. Listening to musicals? Dude, I was listening to, what was that musical? Uh, cats. Uh, cats. With, with the Wolverine. What is it? Uh, the Greatest Show. I've never seen that movie. That's good. It's good. Have good you music. not se- dude? That, I have. I've seen it. Good. Highly recommend it. Yeah, great music. Highly recommend it. Great music. See, my wife doesn't Eesh. like. Okay, never mind. She She'd like that. She doesn't like musicals. She'd like that. I wanted to watch La La, it's La great, Land. It's a great love story. I wanted to watch La La Land, and she was like, "Because I, I like both of those." I will tell you what, I I would be willing to bet money if she saw the greatest show, she'd fall in love with it. Because it's such. Well, Alan ro- watched it. Her father watched it, and uh, was so emotional about it. He like teared up about it. Yes, yes. Isn't that the circus? Yes, yes. Barnum yeah, he Bailey. he freaking loved it. it and can, I was like, it's wow, a, okay. It's such a great connection. In fact, you know, that, well, you know what? I'm glad you said that. Next time uh, Alan's in town, I'm gonna pop that bad boy on. He's gonna sit down and fag out and watch it. Well, I definitely want to watch it. So I okay. recommend it. All right, that and Xanadu. What? With Gene Kelly. Xanadu is a musical. Yeah, I'm not gonna watch it. It is. <laughs> yeah, it's a great it is, one. Is, yeah. It's got some uh, ELO music in there. Oh, oh, by, yeah. oh, by the way, Olivia Newton-John. I know we last week we talked about her death, right? Which was tragic. Uh, she the, is alive. The chicks? No, <laughs> no, she didn't come back to life. Uh, the Dixie Chicks are now called the Chicks, right? They were on stage somewhere and they gave a tribute to her and uh, sang "Hopelessly Devoted to You." It was great. We don't like them anymore, though. Well, I do. Yeah. Yeah, actually, they're coming to Irving. I think I'm going to buy tickets. No. No, I think I am. I will not fund them. Yeah, they yeah. made a mistake. And they yeah. admitted it. It was a big mistake. Yeah, but they're 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 continuing their mistake by calling themselves the Chicks. Yes. Yeah, but so is Lady Antebellum. They're Lady A. Oh, exactly. I won't buy uh, them tickets either. You know either. what? Dudes ah, like us, on. it's always come something. On. Get the fuck out It's I'll, August I'll, I'll the 17th. George Strait. It's, uh, we got just a couple more weeks in September. This is an awesome, it's an awesome time. So we got some awesome bourbon. I don't know if we really went through the bourbon. We didn't even talk about it. We didn't uh, talk about the bourbon. All right, yeah. we got 30 seconds to talk about the bourbon. No, we don't. Cooper. Cooper's Craft. Yeah, it's good stuff. See you uh, later. It was okay. Yeah, Probably it's five, five, and about and six, six. five to six. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're out of time. Guys, dudes like us, I'm Sean. I'm Paul. Mm, Jeff. We'll see you next week. Producer Austin. Thank you.